Yeah, it's been a while since I had time to teach a bit about the Bitwig API and meanwhile version 11 and also version 12 are out so it's definitely time to look into it again. In this part I will just look into version 11 and we will also do not do any coding because it's more like some useful functions which might need some explanation but we don't need to code that. Let's start here. Finally also with 3.2.8 the history got fixed here in the documentation of the API so we can luckily again click in here and see what has changed that was also the reason why i delayed this tutorial so let's see what do we have here in api version 11 it's extensions to the arpeggiator so remember arpeggiator is used for the note repeat if you enable note repeat i did a tutorial about that you will get such an arpeggiator object and you have now here three new methods in here you can also toggle enable uh, overlapping node then you may nice feature can be toggled and also the option to terminate notes immediately can also be set here. So pretty complete now what we have for the arpeggiator. Then there is a really, really nice method here a lot of people were waiting for is that you can say skip disabled items. So for example, if you have a deactivated track and don't want to show them on your device, you can enable that uh, normally added that to driven by Moss as a setting for the different extensions. So you can filter out your deactivated tracks. What still is missing is that you can say the hidden tracks uh, are filtered out because that's a strangely setting in Bitwig but it's not reflected to the controller and creates some issues as well so it would be nice to have this as well but as a workaround you can work with that say okay instead of hiding tracks you do simply say you disable them and then it has the same effect for you. Yeah, I did some tutorials about the new hardware API and these are totally essential functions which were missing so far because if you mapped then to such a generic hardware button, you just want to show the information what is mapped to this button. You could currently not say what is a displayed value and also the modulated value was missing. So currently you could only say what is the label and what is the value, but you could not have this additional information information so you have now that as well you can just subscribe to these values and then you can whatever is mapped you can show that information to the user on the display for example there is this new object enum definition so currently you cannot do much of it so the idea is that you have a kind of list with selection values and these selection values can then be presented for selection yeah uh, i think the idea is that we will have later access uh, to parameters so you can give get uh, parameter lists yeah, for, for the parameter to show them to the user for selection but uh, currently yeah it's not of much use but there is already the APIs here that you can have these uh, enum values and you can also use them in here where I'm confused where am I here also there are some new settings which you can create where you can already use this definition function as well let's go up here so ah yeah this is really nice and I ask for that because this was a real real problem in the new hardware API the thing is if you said before with version 10 uh, that you want to have for example your pads on the controller mapped to a MIDI input so you can play them as a MIDI you could no longer use it as a button so for example if you have uh, additional functionality for example stopping a clip you press your stop button and want to use the pad now to stop the clip this was wasn't possible to implement because it did not fire this action and now you can enable that so if you have for example a, a grid on, on your controller and you set that uh, to be used as a MIDI input with the set table function for the, your notes uh, then you absolutely should enable that if you want to have button combinations as well uh, on such a pad so if you created a hardware button for the pad as well uh, this is now possible to use that just use that method and enable it here on 
a hardware action. There is some helpful functions to the hardware controls as well. So you can give them now a name for a nicer display in the Bitwig mapping area. This one is extremely helpful. Before that, you had to call these indication methods. For example, if currently you could edit the volume tracks on your controller, then you had to call the indication method for track volume. And you had to do that for every mode in each of the changes, which was quite complicated and ugly code. And now it's pretty easy to do because you simply say, okay, I have eight knobs. And then you say, okay, this is the first knob by setting this one uh, to, to zero. This is the second one to set it to one and so on. So normally if you have eight knobs, you set them to zero to seven. And then Bitwig knows these are a group of buttons which belong together and if you map them to the track volume bind it to the track volume then it automatically shows up this indication in Bitwig and you don't need to implement that yourself so this is pretty helpful and eases the work a lot these are more some minor details for the mapping API, which are not of that interest. This is a function I also asked about, which makes life a little bit easier. If you're dealing with colors, you can now have a set of function with the Bitwig color uh, as well. Before that, you had to split it up to its RGB values, which was a little bit ugly. So a little helper function there as well. Yeah, so this was a rundown on API 11. As I said, more some details, but some important ones, especially remember here the set index group for the hardware controls and the fire if you have button combinations as well on MIDI pads, for example. And what else was important, the skip disabled item is also something which is very useful and as well as these methods if you're dealing with displaying values in a display. Okay, hope that was helpful. And in the next episode, we will look into API version 12. And until then, write some funky code.